Hi, my name is Remington Steele, and you're watching the 420 Roll. Hi. Patriot Warriors. Patriot Warriors. Patriot Warriors. Patriot Warriors. Seeing your tag on walls kept me up when I was locked down. I broke out to make that revolutionary sound now for all you scumbags and goons to grind to the ride to. For those laying low, make sure those chains don't find you. Being locked up in a place that you want to be. But if your road leads to prison, then keep your mind free. Even if you're behind bars, freedom comes from your mind. You can be under the stars and still feel behind a cage. Life is a maze, only the strong find the end. I'm traveling through this labyrinth with a pad and a pen. My crew ain't slaves, we snap the necks of our masters. No doubt we're flipping it like 22 chapters. Cause it ain't working, no. Cause it ain't working for us. Cause it ain't working, no. Cause it ain't working for us. Keep it Y-U-K on the East Tampa Bay. We got them cans in the back ready. Time we need a spray. Got them blunts roll with them white owls and the boards. And the coolest they feel with at least 20 quarts. The powder it goes fast, five grams at a time. But with me and these dudes, it's going straight to the mine. Money's in our pocket all the damn time. But we don't work for crap. We just can't hold it inside. We keep our hands raised when we throwing up our set. Cause we beat for oxycodone and at the Dones and Burger set. We do what the heck we want, so leave us alone. And if you wanna talk crap, we're banging straight to the dome. Cause it ain't working, no. Cause it ain't working for us. Cause it ain't working, no. Like Bonnie Cloud, Rod Ranks, only coward ass, but fighting military tanks. No bodies, caskets, kill bombers, cars, and they guns. They pay for the bonds by taking wealth from citizen funds. They brainwashing the youth to stand up for the pledge, cause it's one nation under God, we're like one nation under death. There's a war that threatens our freedom, and so we need to fight it. But when they kill four, family members need to riot. Gathering the Warriors!
laptop. So we're back, the, boys and girls. All my files and everything were on my desktop. That's right. We're back. Yes, we are. We're back. Oh, oh we? almost. There we are. Now we're back. How's that? Da -da 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 -da. We're here. Are we excited? There you go. Now, now Uno, Uno one. Uno, you know. Uno, you know. Saw a UFO. You know, you now it's the story of Uno, you know, the UFO. <laughs> okay, okay, you Uno, you know, you know, you know Uno, you Uno, you know, UFO, UFO. Uh, he's gonna tell us the story there of his UFO. Yes. Okay. Here, I'll we'll put the microphone on you. There, you're you're, um, you're good to go. Oh, uh, thank you for this opportunity to tell my story. Okay. Uh, uh, we try to get a. I have told it a number of times, but never uh, in the company of such like yourself, mm -hmm. under such mad, conditions. Mad men. Never in the company of mad men. Okay. No, no, just crazy people. That's all. <laughs> okay. But not bona fide mad men. Okay, go ahead. With you know the PhD mm -hmm. and all that stuff, you know. Uh, yeah, I was I was telling you before. Uh, uh, this happened uh, back in 1975. Uh, I was uh, in the process of moving from uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan, USA, to uh, a place called Leadville, Colorado, which is a two-mile high city, the highest city in the nation. And uh, I was on a highway that goes east, major interstate going east and west. I uh, was close to a place called Lyman, Colorado, but I was still in Nebraska heading west. Um, in the wee hours of the morning, still dark, uh, maybe around 4 a.m. I kept seeing, uh, at some point, I saw a bright white light that shined down from above, quite distance, you know, ahead of me. And after a while, I keep seeing this, and I'm wondering, what is that? You know, is that a plane or a helicopter or what? But it really didn't seem to be moving anywhere. And after driving maybe, you know, seeing this thing for 10 minutes, I finally get up to where it's at. And uh, I actually pulled over because it was a very unique white light. It just looked unlike, it had a luminescence that was different than anything I'd ever seen. And I was tired anyway, so I thought, well, I'll just pull over here and, you know, get some fresh air, walk around the car, you know, and uh, check this thing out. So I stood there and looked at it, and I'm thinking that's kind of high for a light pole, but it's not moving or anything. I just figured it was something, you know, maybe on a pole or whatever, but, and it was shining down and illuminating a house, a ranch-style home, brick, uh, that was appeared to be part of this, you know, farm with lots of corn growing. And there were a few other outbuildings and etc. So I watched for quite some time and nothing was happening. Eventually I decided, okay, I'm going to get back in my car. And then I turned and this thing appeared to be at a distance uh, initially of somewhere between 100 and 150 feet away from the highway and me. So I turned just as I turned to get back towards my car, the thing started moving toward me. Um, and it moved straight ahead in one direction. It didn't go up or down. And it moved probably about, I would say, somewhere between 40 and 50 feet toward me. And then turned uh, in a left direction, like a left-hand turn, gently and moved about maybe another 20, 25 feet, and then stopped. Um, and of course, you know, I had turned around and watched this going on, and, uh, but I wasn't afraid because I was thinking, you know, uh, you know, I am open to meet visitors if this what it was, whatever it was, I was curious and, and I was open to it. And, uh, but uh, it didn't move any further than that, and I put my hand up to like cover the light was that, so that I might see an outline of it in shape. Was that because it was, uh, was it very bright? 
It was very bright. It was like not blinding. It was shining more down, not at me. It wasn't like moving around like a spotlight moving. It was just stationarily shining down out of whatever it was coming out of. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, is it possible there's some sort of equipment, you know, with a light that moves, some farm equipment, but it didn't make any sense that it could be and I couldn't see anything, you know, supporting this thing. You know, with a light as bright as it would, you would think you would see something. So I did not. And I watched for quite some time, and nothing else was happening. So, and I was, it was October 75, I'm getting cold. So I decided I'm getting back in my car and I'm driving on. So I got back in my car and I drove maybe a mile or so. And then suddenly I saw like an, it was like lightning all over my windshield, like, you know, this bright crackly stuff just for mm -hmm. an instant. And, and I felt immediately exhausted when that happened and kind of almost slumped on the wheel, you know, as I'm driving. And I'm, I'm like, whoa, um, what was that? And I also saw like this, this flash on the windshield, but also kind of like a bright light that just kind of flashed by real quick, you know, like a quarter of a second or something or less, you know. And so I thought possibly, you know, maybe this thing had passed over my vehicle and this was some side effect that was created due to the energy source that it might uh, operate on. I really don't know. But I drove on uh, until I found the rest area and I uh, pulled over and took a nap. And uh, there were other people around there in cars doing the same thing, and going in and out of the, the rest area, restrooms, etc. And I woke in the morning when it was daylight and drove on to Colorado. Did you talk to any of the other people? Had anyone else seen it? No, I didn't talk to anybody there about it. But then once I got to my destination of Leadville, Colorado, where I was going to visit my brother, who happened to reside there. I, I met one of his friends who said he was attending college at Colorado Mountain College, known as CMC. Uh, there I have a campus at Leadville, Colorado. And he asked me if I wanted to go to school with him because um, he was having a class there with this, some psychology professor taught it. And he thought it was, you know, this guy was cool and it was an interesting class. And, mm -hmm. Uh, I could see what the college was like, etc. So I went with him, and uh, the professor uh, started out in the class pulling out a newspaper article and talking about UFOs. And this was like that day's paper, and there were reports of UFOs being seen in the very area where I had been, and uh, in Colorado and in Nebraska, by numerous people. And also, he talked about, in the paper, there were articles about what are known as cattle mutilations that had taken place at the same time. That were, you know, cattle are found with body parts missing. Investigators find no, no means or signs of struggle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Many people may have heard of these stories over the years. I didn't know what to think of this, really, but, um, and I didn't tell anybody there about it. I didn't bring it up. Um, but later I have told this story to other people and eventually I saw this movie called uh, Third Encounters, uh, First en oh, no. Close, Encounters. Close Encounters of the Third Kind and there was something depicted in the movie where someone is in a car and a, and a UFO flies over and it had a very, right. very similar uh, you know, effect, very close to what I saw. Mm -hmm. So I thought well maybe other people have had similar experiences and right. so they based that kind of thing on the movie. Mm -hmm. Put that into that's the what that was. That's like that's uh, that's pretty much the kind of thing that I saw too. Was the kind of the thing that flew over the when I saw the, the movie that uh, the they had these little I, some people call them the scouts and stuff. The little scout uh, like balls of light that fly around and stuff like that. Uh, I've heard of such things and seen videos on television, mm -hmm. etc. But I, the, I've never seen anything like that. That's what. Uh, that's what the thing that I saw would be most like. Again, similar to your thing was uh, I could I could not see the outline of any ship or anything like that. All I could see was the light, you see. 
And, uh, and so I could say, well, it could have been a sphere of light. Mm-hmm. Uh, or it could have been like a flashlight being shined at me. If someone is standing down the road in the dark and they've got a flashlight and they're shining it at you, you won't see them. All you'll see is the flashlight. And mm-hmm. so, and so all we saw was the light. Yes. You know. And uh, this was uh, the one we saw was in Florida in the uh, uh, right at the end of the seventies and uh, or or beginning of the eighties, right at around seventy nine or eighty, and it was. Um, uh, there were, I think, five or six of us down by the water, and uh, somebody made mention, look at look at that, what is that out there? And somebody said, oh, that's all so-and-so, somebody's name out there freaking out the boat people with uh, in his in his hang glider with a big old flashlight. He's freaking out the boat people. That's what they decided that was because it would sort of bob around and float, and then it would, but then it would hold perfectly still, and then it would just move very gracefully and just stop and stuff, and Somebody said, no, that's no hang glider. Couldn't just stop, <laughs> you know, and, and stuff. And so it came closer to us. So that part was similar to your story, too. Mm-hmm. It came closer to us. And somebody said, uh, uh, they know we're watching them, you know. And it came closer to us. And somebody said, they know that we know that they know we're watching them. And it came closer to us. And then about that time, a uh, um, a military helicopter came up the coast and tried to fly a circle around it. And and as soon as it had done maybe about a third of a circle or something, the uh, the U- the UFO bobbed up real quick out of the pilot's uh, view and then down the coast and straight out to the stars. And it never made any sound the whole time we were That's, watching. I heard no sound from this either. So, uh, as far as the balls of light, uh, this this um, brings up a subject that I recently I brought to my attention, and uh, by someone I, I ran into in a in a club uh, in the bathroom, <laughs> of all places. Uh, we happened to say hi, and this fellow told me, "I'm so and so. I'm from you know Wisconsin, mm-hmm. you know." And uh, I said uh, I was from uh, Upper Michigan, Michigan. And said, "Oh, Michigan, man, you know about." And he went on about this place where there are these lights that appear um, on a regular basis, like every day. Mm-hmm. And uh, this well documented. It's been going on since people ever lived in the area. Is that the one that they say it's similar to the northern lights? No, not at all. Because I know I went up to Michigan and there was something like the northern lights. They said it was similar. Uh, no, no. Uh, so anyway, I eventually, about a few weeks after this encounter with this fellow, I looked up uh, this place he told me about on the internet. Mm-hmm. Because I'd heard of a similar thing I told him that I had seen on television about that takes place in Missouri. Mm-hmm. And uh, I looked it up on the internet and I found a lot of information, uh, including accounts from a professor at Michigan Tech, mm-hmm. which is not that far away from where that takes place. And mm-hmm. he said, uh, he described it very, you know, in detail what he saw and his thoughts about it. And he said he mm-hmm. was going to bring back, a, he had access to a mass spectrometer mm-hmm. portable that he was going to bring and try and um, try and figure out what this thing is this energy or whatever is made out of mm-hmm. um, but I don't know if you ever did that that uh, statement was posted like about a year or so ago mm-hmm. that this man had written but there were many different accounts and they're all very similar so I, I wish I could think of the name of the place right now but it's there's also a place I heard about in North Carolina called Brown Mountain Lights. Right, not too far from here. And I have mm-hmm. seen to Wiseman's a video view. of them, but I've never seen them myself. Mm-hmm. Good place to, to see it from is called Wiseman's View. Go mm-hmm. up to Wiseman's View, and you can see them from there. And the, the video mm-hmm. I saw is seen different than the accounts that I've read about and seen, actually seen video on television mm-hmm. of the event that takes place in Missouri. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, the two, the one in Missouri and the one in Michigan, Upper Michigan, are very, very, very similar in, mm-hmm. in accounts that people have you know, written mm-hmm. and studied these things. The one that is Brown Mountain Lights sounds different. Mm-hmm. And though uh, mm-hmm. the video I saw, it looked like some walking around with torches. Okay. You know, people with torches or something. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, like all these tall tales about that. 
from right. the Dandians or whatever from years ago. Right. Well, now the the UFO that you saw mm -hmm. in what state was that? That was in, actually it was in Nebraska. In Nebraska, the near UFO. near the Colorado border, mm -hmm. the, the, and uh, the closest town was is mm -hmm. Lyman or Lehman, L I M O N. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, the UFO that you saw, would you say there was, what, a 50-50 chance it was swamp gas, maybe? Would you? Absolutely no gas at all. You, it was gas in my car. <laughs> you're, sure, you're sure that there was not, that it was not swamp gas? That, Absolutely. That you saw, you couldn't have been just confused no. if you saw swamp gas. No. Or, or uh, could it have been a... a uh, you know, some some kind of atmospheric condition, or no, or, or an airplane. Probably it was very an air, clear and concise. Air, something something you know. that, that the military has, something the military vehicle. Now that's possible. Okay. okay. And you know, uh, the military has, I'm sure, plenty of things. A weather that balloon. I don't know about. Could it have been a weather balloon? No way. <laughs> Are you sure it couldn't have been? I'm a absolutely balloon? certain. It was probably. Well, don't they have weather balloons out there? I'm sure it must have been yeah. a weather balloon. It was Some something. Was swamp that was, gas. I'll know. It was something that was mobile that had a very special light. Mm -hmm. uh, that just strictly shone down. Well, what what impressed me with the one that we saw was the fact that it it accelerated possibly faster than anything I've ever seen accelerate in the air. I mean, mm -hmm. it accelerated from from just sitting there to to like blazing immediately and in doing so it did not make any noise and i don't know of any earthbound uh technology that can accelerate like that and not make any noise in doing it right and that's what really that really caught my attention mm -hmm. you know so back to these other balls you know in these locations i got to thinking about that when i was looking at the information on the internet and i pulled out a map to see is there mm -hmm. some sort of a pattern here Okay. Because I thought, well, people are thinking of this as being a substance. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing. Or something that's emanated from, say, you know, planet Earth. Mm -hmm. But I thought, well, you know, on the moon, mm -hmm. astronauts, as long as you believe that we've had astronauts go to the moon, some people <laughs> are wishy-washy about that, mm -hmm. but that they placed, <laughs> they placed the devices on there so they can beam a laser up and back to Earth so they can tell exact distance mm -hmm. fluctuations of the Earth and Moon. Right. So I thought, well, maybe possibly this is something that had been left here or is being beamed from elsewhere mm -hmm. to planet Earth as far as some sort mm -hmm. of a test. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our scientific uh, right. you know, endeavor. Which one? But when I looked on the map, I saw that um, these three places, Brown Mountain Lights, the place in Missouri, the place in Michigan... Form a triangle. I form a triangle. No. Exactly. And they, it seems to be, they, I did not measure or calculate these things, mm -hmm. you know, on the internet, but uh, Google or whatever, but it looks very uh, equidistant sides. I see. So this. An equilateral triangle. This no seems way. to me to be something that if someone were performing tests mm -hmm. on the earth, from remotely or even on the earth. Well, how about the spot where you saw the It would make sense to have these things placed at such distances. How about the spot where you saw the UFO? If you put that spot on the map. I don't think that has any relationship with these other okay, things. Okay, well, no. Well, at I'll, least any that I would the, think. The UFO that I saw and the, and the triangle come into play in that mm -hmm. I also pulled out a map. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, I pulled out a map, and I knew, I knew precisely where I was standing. Yeah. At the time, and I pulled out the map, and it, and I pulled out several maps, and one of the maps that I pulled out had uh, had the uh, Bermuda Triangle on it, mm -hmm. and the western point of the Bermuda Triangle touches land in on the continent, uh, and, and precisely where you were the spot that I was standing on. That was in Florida. Yeah. What What is the closest town? But, well, I was in yeah. Miami. I was oh, in Coconut Miami. Grove. Coconut Grove. It touches. It. I mean. It, I, I mean. Right at the very street intersection. I mean. I. I. I looked on the street maps and everything and followed the coastline and and da da da, da right down and it, the point is right there where I was standing. Uh huh. It was amazing. And I began to suspect that before I actually found the map that had it all on there. But uh -huh. when I when I was able to really pin it down completely, it was precisely where I was standing. See. Isn't that weird? Maybe. So you're Maybe not. Then if you went to the Bermuda Triangle, you're lucky to be here. I have no idea what that has to do with it. 
But it, but as a you know, if you would like to know exactly mm-hmm. where it was that I saw it, if you can mm-hmm. if you can trace Bermuda Triangle to exactly where the the westernmost point touches land, that's where I was standing. Yeah. Well, the balls of light thing. I mean, these these see these occur in the same place all the time. Mm-hmm. Same place, same time. They don't they, like they don't like you know. Don't just like here, visit every once in a while and, and, and zip around. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people, <laughs> they see maybe some movement, but it's it's always the same. So that makes me think of something automated, possibly, or operated by computers or, you know. Or naturally occurring. Robots, whatever. I mean, it's... it's like Old Faithful is naturally occurring. It is. But since this is a light, um, seen it, it's seen by people as light, mm-hmm. you know. It could be just a side effect of something else that's going on. But you haven't gone to the places and experienced it yet. I, I personally haven't, but I'm, I would like to. Yeah. All right, so, yeah, so and, and tell us about the UFO you saw there, Adam. What? Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I'm just trying to, I, was, I figured it was time to bring you all into the conversation. Yeah. Certainly. Into the show. So there, you're on. Ah. Have you seen any Where? UFO? No, but I tried to convince some of my friends that I was babysitting that uh, that their car in the backyard was a UFO, and I think I created a mass hysteria in the house. The kids were afraid to go to bed. Really? <laughs> I said, that's a UFO. It's like, you better come to bed or they're going to come get you. And they're sitting there like, eh, eh. and then I'm pointing right at it, and it's their car. And they all fell for it. So <laughs> I got them to go to bed. Hmm. Scared the heck out of them, too. Excellent. But I can't say that I've seen one. I'm well, then you, you then saw one, something one time at Salem Lake, actually, mm-hmm. and it was like a light, and it was moving and then stopped and went back the same direction it came from without turning or anything very quickly, and then it ended up disappearing. I watched it for about five to ten minutes. Was it shining a light down on the lake or anything like that? Mm-hmm. No. It was just a light in the sky over the lake. Mm-hmm. How far? Probably right over the middle of the lake. How far up? Uh, up. Uh, not very, very high up. Oh, it's kind of hard to tell, though. Make a noise? No, nope, no noise. Sounds like a good and, one. And it, you know, it, it was going, and I usually don't see anything that without turning around can go back the same mm-hmm. direction it came from. And we don't usually see it, anything that can fly about and not make a noise either. Yeah. Was it fast? Then, was it slow? Yeah, it was fast, very fast. And then, so then, it, just, you, then it just shot up. Well, it sounds like you saw one to me. Maybe. Maybe you didn't. You know, it was like, did you see what you described? Yes. Okay. Well, and how did it affect you at the time? You were just like, hmm. Maybe it was a lightning bug. No. No. Swamp gas. No. Definitely not swamp gas. <laughs> <laughs> Weather balloon. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. Go Balloons don't move a, that fast. Mm-hmm. I've never seen a balloon a... that moves that fast. Okay. Now, there's a clan of owls out in the woods playing around with people's flashlights that they went camping, and they're just trying to mess with you now. Or they got the little laser pointers, and they go, Could it have been a big old crow carrying a flashlight? No. Swooped down, grabbed your flashlight, took off with it. He's like, Crow can can carry a flashlight. Are any of you familiar with uh, Dr. Stephen Greer? Yeah, he used to live here in Asheville. I know. Uh, I met him at a presentation he did um, a number of years back. Here at uh, UNCA. Oh, uh-huh. it was jam packed, uh, mm-hmm. the auditorium. And uh, I found it quite interesting. Um, uh, he showed some video tapes, films, or whatever, uh, and, and had a discussion and question and answer. But uh, during the videos, um, there was one that was a press conference with these people uh, who had been former government people and military people who told of some of their, just briefly got up and told of some of their accounts and they said they want right. the government to open up the records and look into these things and mm-hmm. you know, let's, let's, you know, let's get out what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I was impressed with it. I took some paperwork with me that he was handing out. Um, and I, I went to work the next day. I, I worked in a kind of public place. It was a health club. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I happened, one of my co-workers, um, I, I, I know that he was a retired Air Force pilot. Mm-hmm. And I asked, I said uh, to him, Jerry, hey, why don't you take a look at this and see what you think? 
And he took a look at it and he, he held it in his hand for just a few seconds and he handed it back to me and said, nobody's got to convince me about UFOs. He said, me and my buddy, our buddies were scrambled to go chase uh -huh. UFOs off the coast of Maine. In the middle of the Back in, such, in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And he told the very same story that this general uh -huh. had told during you know, the, the presentation by Dr. Greer. Mm -hmm. So you found some okay. kind of mind blow. I found that day I encountered three people who had had you know pretty important and high level you know clear encounters uh -huh. with UFO experiences um, you know within their life mm -hmm. and uh, quite amazing. I mean, he told me that they chased them; they could not ever get close to them, mm -hmm. and that at one point they just like went up at a, you know, so many Council. degrees out, you know, up UFOs in there. They couldn't follow them because it was too high. And they went back and refueled and went back out again. And these things were seen on uh, radar, whatever they were. But he said we could never get a visual on them. And this was back, you know, when, uh, bef before uh, the cold. But and he said he was sure that nobody else was around when they were talking. He said that he has a research job working on a UFO that had been, had crashed and was being held at the Air Force Base, Wright Air Force Base in Ohio. Wright? I think it's Wright. But Air Force Base in Ohio, mm -hmm. and uh, that they've been working on it, and, like looking to do like reverse engineering project on this. And that went along with stuff Dr. Greer was talking about. Right. Exactly. And uh, he also told me that when he was a kid about one he saw in Louisiana, broad daylight, that was, he said, bigger than a football field. I've heard such tales. And he said that really uh, kind of freaked him out, mm -hmm. scared him. Well, they believe yeah. Alright. So what kind of show are you working on up there? You Here know, at UR TV? Editing, you have something to edit. Uh, actually I was just uh, I just took an editing class and I'm working on uh, I just did some my final class uh, Tuesday and I just played around with something and edited it and I wanted to stick it on a DVD mm -hmm. to save it and just show a friend you know, what I've been doing. So I'm not out playing hooky, you know. <laughs> But uh, also, uh, I have a couple ideas uh, in mind that I want to do a show. One I've had in mind uh, for quite a while is to do a program uh, on people who have had what are called either near death or actually death experiences, and where they were dead and came back to life or brought back by medical technology. And, uh, you know, interviews with them and also. More importantly than just documenting what went on, because there's many books out on this subject, but to go more into how has this changed their life? All right? And I know a number of people already that would be good for this particular.